Uh, at this time, I'm going to turn this over to Sergeant Jennifer Ross. Uh, before Sergeant Ross took over the new position, uh, she was the supervisor over our criminal investigation division. So if anybody knows anything about the uh, state of an investigation in this city, Jennifer does. She knows it. So she's going to talk to you about the status of investigations and then some crime prevention. Good. I raised her too. Another one about. Literally. <laughs> um, I just wanted to kind of give some in information about where we are in some of these investigations. And I hate having to be vague, but I, but I have to be. Because if too much information gets out, then the wrong people get a hold to it. So I'm going to ask you on some of these things to just please read between the lines. Um, regarding the, the rash of burglaries that we had earlier in the summer, DeKalb County was chasing stolen carloads of teens every day. We had the opportunity to run two said carloads out of the city, but you have to understand that there are parameters set for what we can and can't chase for. But we were running them off. And just like Chief Lee was saying, they will steal a car big enough to handle a 60-inch flat panel. So we started paying extra attention, and the, the residents were too to, you know, Dodge Ram, pickups, minivans, SUVs, backing into the neighbor's driveway with groups of teenagers crawling out. And we were, DeKalb has made numerous arrests. They did a saturation patrol throughout July and made dozens of arrests. And early July, it was actually our Oakhurst, the night of our Oakhurst meeting, that was the last one and it just kind of died out. Um, the, I wanted to talk for a minute about what we have had in this area early on in May. I had a couple of burglaries, Pinehurst and East Ponce, where during the day someone entered the house and went through some things and then left. There were flat panels, there were iPads, there were laptops, there was items of value everywhere in the home and they just didn't take anything. It was unusual. I almost thought it might be someone with some mental health issues based on how things were done and they just came and went in a matter of minutes and, and I, I think that the, probably the biggest problem this neighborhood would have is all of the walkers coming and going from DeKalb Avenue and Winway and, and to and from MARTA so I can only guess that somebody was walking by and decided they were gonna go into somebody's house and look but not take anything. Um, the current state of, of burglaries, I, the reason that we believe that these kids are back active again from South DeKalb County is because the burglary that happened on Superior Avenue on Sunday, we were tracking an item that was stolen on Monday which led us to a house in South DeKalb County and lo and behold we crossed paths with one of the teens that DeKalb had previously arrested back in June. He didn't know anything about it. And um, we were out back with DeKalb County today in that area with some other kids that were hanging out with him and and one of them I do know was taken into custody for something on DeKalb County. So this is every day, every minute, we're running back and forth to deal with these kids. The problem is that juveniles are not held the way that adults are, especially with property crimes, because the goal in the juvenile justice system is not to incarcerate, is to try to get the kid on probation, get some diversion in place, and return them back to the parents. And that's just the way it is. We hate it. <laughs> But people think we're mean when we say that you should, some of these kids that we keep repetitively locking up, that you should keep them. You know, we're, we're just considered rude, rude for that. It is, uh, but we can't stop what we're doing just because that, that, that drives us nuts. Also, you, juveniles' fingerprints are not kept on file the same way that adults are. Um, there are other parameters that we have to, to go through other means. So that's one of the things that's really been helpful with uh, DeKalb County and Atlanta and all of us work. I've been in investigations for 10 years and I used to think DeKalb County PD's phones didn't dial out because I had such a hard time getting people to call me back and that has changed so much since the new chief took over and they have put new units in place and rearranged their staff and it is just phenomenal the difference it makes and when we have that and we're working together it does make a difference. Um, so we are, what we're doing is every time they deal with a juvenile that they think is involved or we come across one, we backtrack to try to find out if their prints have ever been taken for another reason and we were able to get a hit that way on one of the Winona Park burglaries and charge that juvenile. And that was one of the very same juveniles that DeKalb County had charged. So we know that that's connected. So the, you see the reason we think the Sunday burglary on Superior is related is because it led us right back to another one of these, these same kids. So um, regarding the the robberies, and I have everything that I was going to say, he's just about said. 
It's the same kind of situation with the juveniles committing the robberies in the Oakhurst area, but this time it was with Atlanta kids, Zone 6. These were young kids in Kirkwood that Atlanta was already dealing with. And I'm over there, you know, crawling their walls about my two robberies over the course of, you know, 48 hours. And they're like, well, we've had 12 and 72. And we think it's all the same crew. And the problem is you have six, eight, ten kids, and they, some of them will jump in one car and go out and do something, and then two of them will get out, and then two more will get in, and then they'll get another car, and then four will get out, and two more. And sometimes there was four, sometimes there was six, sometimes there was two. We, the bottom line is I know who did my robberies, and I'm working to prove it. And Atlanta has already been able to make some charges on some of them, but it's just when you're dealing with 13, 14, 15-year-old kids, the rules are different, what we have to do to make these cases is different and we we're a rule following agency that's why you don't see us on the news <laughs> you know we we don't we don't go outside the boundaries that we're allowed to go out of um, I, we we know who these suspects are and and we're working to try to get them we ha have enough probable cause to make some arrests but Atlanta knows who they are too in addition to the monthly meetings that we have here we meet with them monthly just because but we meet with them more often when things are going on and I get packets of you know pictures of kids and information about them from my officers saying these are more kids that we've found so that way our officers can be watching watching out so we know who these kids are um, the carjacking on Sycamore Drive um, there are issues with that case and that's all I can say at this time <laughs> is sometimes I just I want you to understand that sometimes we work things that are not they didn't occur the way that they were reported. We also sometimes, uh, like anybody look at our UCR statistics when they come out in the reports or when they come out online, anybody know what UCR is? It's Uniform Crime Reporting, and that's where we voluntarily choose to report our crime statistics for the major crimes to the FBI, like agencies do all over the United States. And we put those out, and people are like, oh my God, they've had 21 robberies. That's not always accurate because sometimes we get robbery, fairly regularly we get robberies reported that didn't happen. And we spend more time sometimes on the cases that didn't happen because you're chasing your tail to, to unfound those robberies. In some of those cases we will charge the person with false report of a crime. But sometimes when you feel like you've heard something has happened and you're not really hearing anything else, we're dealing with more than, than meets the eye. Is that understandable, the best way that I can explain it? <laughs> like I said, read between the lines. Um, the, we're constantly looking for what's, what's coming, coming toward us, and sometimes you don't know that you have a pattern until you have enough to establish a pattern. But just solely based on that one burglary on Superior, linking back to a team that we know we know who he is and then now the one on Oldfield on Monday and DeKalb having had several in the Midway Woods area which is that's what bumps up to that that corner of Decatur uh, that tells me it tells us they're they're back some semblance of this these groups of teens because some of them have been arrested and some have been released and some of them never got arrested and they were talked to and had to be let go so they're back and more importantly they've crossed the tracks, as people like to say, because Superior Avenue is not in one owner park. So they steal cars big enough to go steal a flat panel and laptops, and then they'll go back in, check, usually houses with no cars in the driveway. So if you want to think about how your house looks during the day when you're gone, um, sometimes they'll ring the doorbell to see if anybody answers. If somebody does answer, I've heard stories like, they'll say, is so-and-so here? And they'll name a name that, if you've lived in your house for 15 years, that's, that's a ploy. Go ahead and just don't answer the door, no, and call us. Because what they're going to do is go a couple of streets over. And if you can pay attention to what the car they're in or just the, you lead us to the right area, we can start coming in from every direction. And, you know, if you're like, there's a purple PT Cruiser backed up in my driveway and some kid I don't know knocked on my door wanting Kimberly. Well, just take it for what that is and let us find that purple PT Cruiser and stop those kids. And if he is a legitimate kid looking for somebody named Kimberly, that's fine. You know, we'll, we'll, he'll go be sent on his merry way. If he's with three or four other kids in a stolen car, then we're going to deal with that accordingly. Um, I just, I, I don't, I'm trying to think of the things that we've sent out recently. Um, we also sent out an alert recently about a robbery at the credit union 
in the CVS complex. That was on Decatur Metro. And then one down near Farmburger. Both of these robberies reported after the fact. One was reported five days after it happened. One was reported the next day. <laughs> Sometimes people do report crimes late, and they have various reasons. I was scared. I didn't know what to do. I had to go talk to my parents about it. I had to go talk to my friends about it. And I will tell you, in one of these, we had a situation like that where I believe somebody had to be talked into coming to the police at a later date um, because they just felt like nothing could be done. Well, it makes it incredibly hard to do something five days later, but we're still going to try. Um, the, the other one, I, I would say, once again, we're dealing with an with a issue where first thing in our investigation is to try to verify the facts of the case. When things are changing and they're not adding up, just know that that's sometimes what we're dealing with. So, uh, and then there was one we put out <coughs> yesterday. Anybody in here familiar with the Decaturish blog? It's the newer blog. It was posted on there. It did not show up on Decatur Metro, but it was the uh, middle school kid walking home from school that got picked up and shook until he could, his iPhone dropped out of his pocket and then the kid took off. Uh, stand by for, for that one because we've pretty much today got, got our suspects identified in that. And that's, that's just going to be a case of bigger kids. <laughs> that's going to be a case of bigger kids picking on little kids and they think it's fun and games until they're charged with, rob with robbery. So, um, but just know that we, we deal, when we have a school resource officer and we work very closely with the school system, so stuff that's happening at what we call in-house with our own kids, that's usually nipped in the bud and handled very quickly. And I, as I was stomping around the police department today, I was like, we're dealing with kids from outside the city messing with people. I don't have time for our kids to start acting out now and start doing stuff to our own kids. So, a <laughs> little ranting and raving. Uh, <clears throat> I want to talk for a second about what is suspicious? I get this question a lot since it was announced that I uh, took this position. A lot of phone calls and emails of people just wanting to say, I feel bad about calling. I see things, it doesn't feel right to me, I don't know what to do, I don't know what is suspicious. Look at the behavior, do not look at appearance. Because that seems to be the biggest issue that I'm hearing. I have people tell me, I saw four or five kids get out of a car backed into my neighbor's driveway and I, I, I knew something was up because I, my, my neighbor doesn't even have kids, so why would other kids be coming to visit the kid? But I felt bad about calling because I felt like that somebody was going to think I was a racist. And I was like, would you have thought it was odd if a car backed up to your neighbor's driveway with five or six white kids in it and there's no kids living there and you don't recognize these kids? Yeah, call. Call. Um, Ask yourself what, do you recognize the person? Are they backing into your neighbor's driveway? Have they been circling the block? Or is it a big group? Is it people that you don't know? I mean, you typically know who comes and goes. And if it's on the, you know, we get calls all the time where it's a painter or it's a plumber or it's a dog walker. And you typically know who your neighbors, you know, comes and goes regularly from your neighbor's house. But we're not going to roll up guns a blazing and jump out of the police car and start, you know, drawing guns on a, on a plumber. <coughs> We're going to come to the location and see what we've got and, and talk to people. And we quite often verify who they are and thanks for cooperating. And then we get back in our car and drive off. But I'll tell you what that does. What you may be doing is guiding us to where they're at or the area that they're currently in while we're just mere streets over looking to see if anybody's breaking into houses. And you've now given us a color and a type of vehicle to start looking for because I'm going to drive down this street and I'm not going to know who belongs in every driveway. There's no way for the 46 officers at our department to know who is allowed or who's supposed to be in and around every single person's house. But you know who typically comes and goes from your neighbor's driveway. So seeing something and going, that's not right, and calling us, if we have a non-emergency number and we're going to talk about that at the very end, and just saying, there's a car backed into my neighbor's driveway, or there's a group of people over here, or there's somebody at the door, and I don't recognize them. Can you send an officer to check it out? And then we're going to come do it. And it, I get a lot of, after the fact, while we're on the scene working a burglary, people will come up to us kind of sheepishly, and they'll be like, there was a van backed in out here earlier, and I thought something was wrong, and then I saw the police later, and then I will know something's wrong, and I feel really bad because I didn't call, because I didn't want to bother you. Please, God, bother us. Bother us. It makes a difference. When everything was becoming more known and on the blogs and on the news, when all that was happening in early June, 
what ended up happening is our call volume for suspicious vehicles and persons, which used to run 230, 240 calls a month, jumped up in July to over 400 calls. Do you know what we stopped having in the book of July when all of that started? Our, the burglaries virtually stopped because not only are you guiding us to where we need to go, if people are actually, you know, looking, driving around looking, you know, for a house to break into and casing, sitting up and watching, and every time they go park somewhere, somebody calls on them and the police roll up, you know what that tells them? It tells them the neighbors call, don't come here, and the police come. I shouldn't come here. I should go somewhere else.